Hello world, Noah here, and welcome to the Python one-liner tips and tricks series. In this series, I'm going to give you some of my favorite tips and tricks to writing one-liners, specifically in the Python programming language, and then once the basics are established, we'll actually take some real problems and work through them. Uh, first, we should define what exactly do I mean by one-liner. So a one-liner is pretty much what it sounds like. It's, it's a single line of Python code or code in general that solves a problem. So, you know, let's say you're going on some website like Code Wars and you're given a problem, you know, take, you know, this input and, uh, and you know, do something and generate a certain output. Well, if you can write all of that on a single line, if you can solve the problem in a single line, then it's considered a one-liner. And this may seem kind of silly, you know, why would you try to cram everything on one line, especially for a complicated challenge? And the reason, you know, there's a few reasons. First of all, um, yeah, it is, it is a little bit silly, um, but it's kind of cool if you can solve these complex problems in a single line. Um, something you can show other people and say, look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really good at this. Uh, but even beyond that, if you can solve complicated problems in a single line, it means that you have a very solid understanding of the language you're using, in this case, Python. So you have to have a really deep understanding of Python in order to be able to express complicated um, you know, operations and complicated ideas in a single line. So being able to solve problems in, in, in one line is partially just to show off, but also partially to, um, you know, prove that you really understand the language. And in the process of learning uh, how to write code in, in, in one line, uh, you learn more features of the language. So to be clear, when I say one line, what I really mean is one statement. And so you may or may not know this, but Python does actually support semicolons. And so you could do something like this, x equals one semicolon uh, print x, right? And so in Python, semicolons are optional, but if you wanna have multiple statements on the same line, you separate them by a semicolon. So here I'm declaring a variable x and then I'm printing out x. Now this is technically on one line, but it's cheating really, because you could take any program, no matter how long it is, and collapse it down into one line, and you just put a semicolon between every line. And so that obviously is not going to count. And you know, if you go out in the wild and you and you look at real Python code, I mean, you won't find any one-liners in, in complicated things, or you won't find many one-liners, uh, but you'll rarely, if ever, see semicolons. So it's not, it's a feature that exists in Python, but it's not one that you should use whether or not you're writing one-liners. And so when I say one-liner, I really mean one statement. And so, you know, that's the first rule, no semicolons. And then the other rule is no blocks. And so what I mean by that is, you know, you could do something like, you know, if x is equal to one, you know, print high, whatever the problem is. And that's obviously a very contrived problem. Um, but the idea is that, that if this is still one line, right? But the if statement is really a block. And so the way that you would normally write this is if x equals equals one, and then the print statement would go in the next line and it would be indented over. And so because we're using a block here, this is also not going to count as a one liner. Um, and so when I say one liner, I really mean one statement and the if, although it's called an if statement, it really is a block of code. And so we're not going to count that either. And so if you can write code, you know, in one line with no semicolons and no blocks, that's basically my definition of, of a one liner for the purposes of this. And I'll start off by giving you the first tip. And this is, I guess, a pretty straightforward tip, although the ones in the future will get more and more complicated and interesting. And the first one is just really understand the standard library. And so, you know, this is what I, what I said at the beginning was that being able to write these one-liners shows that you have a really strong understanding of, of Python. And so when you're trying to solve a problem, um, you know, there's all these built-in functions, there's all this built-in functionality to Python that will do some pretty complicated things for you. And so, you know, for example, if I gave you a list of numbers and I said, find the, the minimum value in that list, well, that would be a little bit complicated for you to write. And maybe it would be tricky for you to write it in one line, uh, but there's the min function that's built in. And so you can just say, you know, get the min value of the list and you're done. You don't have to worry about 
all of this complexity. And so min and max will do what they say. It'll return the min uh, or max of several numbers of several values or a list of values. And it would work on numbers as you'd expect. It would work on uh, strings where it would compare, um, you know, uh, lexicographically, so alphabetically basically. Um, so you can use min and max uh, for that. Another really useful one is sum. So if you do, you know, for example, sum of a list, so the sum of the list one, two, three would be one plus two plus three, which is six. And so that's a really useful feature. If you had to do something that involves a sum of a list or a sum of something, then instead of having to implement it, you have the sum function built in. And I guess I'll quickly write up here the min of one, two, three is uh, of course three, or sorry, the min value is of course one, and the max value is of course three. So just to make that extra clear. So the min is, is one and the max is three. Uh, two other useful ones are any and all. And so these work with a collection, let's say a list of Booleans, right? And so if you have any, that means at least one true, right? So if you have a list of Booleans, and that may seem kind of contrived, but you can actually generate a list of Booleans as we'll, um, as we'll see later on. But any means that if at least one of the Booleans in that list is true, then it'll return true. And all means all are true, and then it'll return true. So basically, if you have a list of Booleans, um, if at least one is true, then any will return true. And um, for all, they all have to be true, of course. And so that's a really useful one. If you have a condition, if you have um, maybe a list of values, let's say, and you want to check a certain condition uh, on all of those values, and you want to say if any of those values meets the condition or if all of those values meet the condition, then any and all are really, really useful for that. And then there's also sorted and reversed, and they do what they sound like sorted will give you a sorted copy of your list and reversed will give you a reverse copy of your list. And these are useful because very often you'll have to do um, sorting and, and reversing in problems. It definitely comes up quite a bit. Um, but if you have a list, let's call it L, you know, there is a built in sort function or method. You can do L dot sort like that. The problem is that this will return none and it will sort the list itself. So it'll sort L, but it will return none. And so if you're trying to write a one-liner, none is basically like a dead end. When you get none back, you can't do anything with it, right? But for example, you know, if you said sorted of L, it'll give you back a list, which is obviously not a dead end. You can continue to do stuff with it. Technically, this gives you back an instance of the sorted class, but you can convert it to a list easily and and so I'm not going to worry too much about the specifics. Uh, but the idea is that the sort method that's built in will return none, which is a dead end. Um, but sorted will actually give you a list back so you can keep on doing stuff with it. Maybe you want to sort some values and then do another computation with them, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then reversed is the same way, except that um, it reverses the list instead of sorting it. And so that's all for this first introductory video. I just wanted to explain the the idea of this series and then give this first you know tip, which I guess is kind of uh, kind of common sense. But as I said, the tips will start to get more and more interesting, and I think by the end um, you'll definitely learn something new, even if you are a pretty experienced Python programmer. And so that's all for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.